So uh, my beautiful, fantastic wife, Karen, was in full-on panic mode last Saturday on the way to the gig that I had scheduled in Tiffin, Ohio. It was actually kind of funny to me, but I don't think she was laughing at all until later on when we were talking about it, and I was telling her stories about some of my past experiences traveling this great country entertaining alcoholics with my one man jerry dog comedy road show nightclubs taverns and neighborhood bars hey what's up everybody it is monday september 17th 4 20 p.m this is a very special edition mileage monday here on the 420 report very cool a lot of people joining in already man thanks thanks for being here uh let me give some shout outs who we got jennifer martha keith susan Mary, Fred, Christina, Johanna's here. Thank you, guys. Tammy checking in from the Eagles Club. Good to have you. We just did an Eagles Club last Saturday night. It was our first ever tent show. I'll tell you about that. I'll tell you about my adventures on the way, plus some more exciting road stories from the past. So while we're going along with this 20-minute live video, that I do every day at 4.20 p.m. or as close as possible. Leave me some questions and some comments, and let's get the conversation going. Hey, Sarah, what's up? Derek is here, and Terry. Hit the like button, the thumbs up button, the smiley face emoji, the laugh, the love. Fuck, even hit me up with an anger button. I don't care. I just like the participation. I like making the connection with you every afternoon here on a Facebook Live video. I really appreciate it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and also, let me get the show dates coming out. Hey, Tricia, what's up? Mason Hansen is in the house. Looking forward to hanging out with you, dude, in a couple weeks at the Kenwick Eagles Club. That's Friday, October 5th. But Right now, most urgently, I want to spread the word to all of my Iowa friends because this will be your last chance in 2019 to come see Jer Dog Live. This is your last chance for the year, 2019, 28. What fucking year is it? I'm already booking 2019. I've already got like all my Saturdays filled up until March or April. Um, so that's just in my head, whatever. But listen, uh, next Friday night, or this coming up Friday night, September 21st, I'll be in Charles City, Iowa at Hot Shots Billiards with Nathan Tricky Allen in the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show. Even if you have seen the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show before or even recently and you're in the Charles City, Iowa area, that means also southern Minnesota possibly. Anybody from Iowa can pretty much get to that show. Like you can get from anywhere to anywhere else in this state with like a two or three hour drive. So I'd appreciate it. Come on out, man. I'll hit you up with some tickets. Send me a message. I'll tell you exactly how to get them. And I'll put all the show information in the video description above as soon as I get wrapped up here. But spread the word. You know, let people know this is the last chance for 2018 to come see Jared Dog Comedy Roadshow, Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show this Friday night, September 21st, Hot Shots Billiards in Charles City, Iowa. And then where am I going to be? Next Saturday night, also Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show in Fulton, Illinois at Kingpins. And then lots of fun stuff coming up in October. We're really fucking busy this fall, man. John Donovan's here. Ed is here. Good to see you guys, man. All the 420 regulars are joining in. Whoa, what a crazy adventure we had last weekend going out on the road. I don't know if you've done a lot of traveling. I don't know if you've um, ever had your car break down in the middle of nowhere. You didn't know anybody. Um, maybe no AAA. These, these are the experiences I've had for like, Fuck, 15 years. Since 2003, I've been traveling around. Putting about 1,000 miles per week on average uh, on the car, which is why I just rent these days. You know, I don't want to pay to destroy a vehicle. So I'll just rent the fucker. You know, let somebody else incur that wear and tear. And which is a lot of fun because I get to drive around in a nice new fat whip every fucking weekend now. Last weekend, my beautiful wife, Karen, decided to make a last minute uh, decision. She came on the road with me Friday night. I had an eight hour long business meeting in Chicago. That was very productive and a lot of fun. Shout out to Steve and Michelle Cypress for hosting that 
at the Crown Plaza there outside Midway Airport in Chicago. A lot of fun, cool stuff coming up in the Jaredog universe. Very exciting stuff, so stay tuned. I'll tell you all about that as it happens and we go along. We got more comments coming. It would be awesome for my birthday, but sadly I have to work. Well, that's a bummer. It's going to be great, dude. It is going to be great. Did Tricky give you the sickness? Well, Tricky has always been sick. He's been sick in the head for as long as I've ever known him. Uh, but no, so far so good, Derek. Seems to be all right, although the research is in. And I got to let me, let me just give props to my co-star, Nathan Tricky Allen, the maniac of magic in the Dirty Jokes and Magic Trick Show. Last Saturday night, we rolled into Tiffin, Ohio. It's like a real hot, muggy summer night. And by the time the sun went down, the weather was perfect. However, uh, I got a text message from Nathan earlier in the week. Hey, dude, you're a hippie. Do you know any natural remedies for uh, uncontrollable cough? And I'm like, yeah, I know one. Stop fucking smoking. That might help you out with your uncontrollable cough. But in any case, you know, he had bronchitis or something. And the dude still managed a 10 or 11 hour drive, whatever it was, from where he lives in central Iowa, all the way out to Tiffin, Ohio, to perform in a fucking parking lot. It was one of, I think, it not one of our first, our, our first ever tent show. It felt like a real throwback to P.T. Barnum days, you know. It was actually kind of a lot of fun. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never performed in a parking lot with the audience under a tent before. I'd done a lot of outside shows. I mean, I talk about it all the time when I did the Comedy Wild West show. That was five shows every single day that was outside in the sweltering heat. But I always consider myself an anomaly when it comes to that kind of experience, just like I'm an anomaly when it comes to the experience of traveling around the country and having car breakdowns. I can't wait to tell you this story here in just a little bit. But first, I want to give kudos and shout out to Nathan for driving the 10 hours with bronchitis, guzzling cough syrup the entire way, still got on stage and crushed it, dude. They freaking loved him. Turns out cough syrup makes you funnier. Job well done, Nathan Tricky Allen. I was impressed, man. You know, I do about 100, 150 shows every single year. I have since 2003. Uh, like I've always told you before, and, you know, before that, I was doing the Comedy Wild West show pretty much every single day. You would maybe take three days off the entire summer, and that's if you were a pussy, you know. We'd all give each other shit. You need a day off already, dude? You've only been working 45 days straight. Why do you need a fucking day off? man but no, hell no you get out there every single day sick hung over pissed off on the run from the fucking cops whatever it took to get the job done you showed up and you did it sweltering heat you know rain shine sleet or snow there was going to be a goddamn comedy show and that's the attitude that i take even now 15 years of doing stand-up comedy these cush gigs where it's usually an air-conditioned venue pretty much the perfect environment except sometimes you know i do these bars or taverns where they squeeze you in between two dart boards and you gotta keep you gotta police the audience keep motherfuckers from pumping quarters into the jukebox machine and starting up new pool games and you're dealing with hecklers and all kinds of crazy shit waitresses dropping trays of drinks you got to be adaptable you got to be spontaneous i was actually really looking forward to doing that show so uh shout out to the tiffin eagles club Having us in last Saturday night, that was a lot of fun. The Maniac and Magic, Nathan Allen, performing with bronchitis, uh, loaded up on cough syrup. It was freaking hilarious, man. It was absolutely hilarious. Hey, Bob, what's up? Bob is here. Teresa's here. David Chivers joining in. Good to see you, dude. Jennifer Sunnyborn, Matt Jansen. Jennifer, how about the middle of nowhere in a bean field? Well, how about in the middle of nowhere in a cornfield? You know, keep in mind, I live here in Iowa, and pretty much any time you have a car breakdown in this state, unless you're on one of the two interstates that just happens to go crisscross right in the middle, I-35 or I-80, anywhere you break down in Iowa, you're pretty much stuck in the middle of a cornfield. I've been there, done that. So last Saturday, on our way from Chicago to Tiffin, Ohio, we're, we're going down the turnpike through Indiana, through Ohio. And when you're on these turnpikes, there aren't very many places to pull over. There's, you know, there's the oasis. 
that they have. It's it's like right. So every once in a while, you know, there's an exit when you go near, near a major city or whatever. But there's always the oasis where they've got one gas station. There's like maybe a Starbucks or a Caribou coffee. And then like a pizza place and a burger joint. That is it, right? So if you don't get your shit taken care of, it might be 30, 40 miles before you get to the next stop. Which isn't nearly as bad as like South Dakota or North Dakota, where I've been going the last couple of weeks, and you, you're driving down the road and you see these billboards and signs that says "last gas" or "last food" for the next 99 miles. That shit'll freak you out too. Uh, but last Saturday, we're driving down the road, we're driving down the turnpike, we pass the oasis. Bing, the uh, low fuel light comes on the car. <laughs> And on these new vehicles, you know, I've never really owned a vehicle that I always buy my cars used because, like I said, I'm going to beat the shit out of the fucker, putting a thousand miles a week on it. You know, you got wear and tear, you got maintenance. And so I never want, I don't want to have a car payment every month on top of repairs and maintenance every single month, which was, it was happening every single, every single month. There's like a $450 repair. So I don't want to have a car payment on top of that. That's just fucking dumb. So I would always buy used vehicles. They, to me, if it had 100,000 miles on it, that's pretty much new in the Jaredog world. So that's what I would buy. Just flat out cash, boom, two or three grand, thank you, you know, and I'm on my way. Um, but they were never, you know, they were never new. I think the newest vehicle I've ever owned was like a 2002. Well, these new vehicles now, like they come with, the a little uh indicator it's right there in the dash where it says how many miles you have left until empty and you know if you toggle through the menu a little bit it'll give you your current gas mileage it'll have there right there on the dash like whatever cds or music options you want to listen to how to access the bluetooth on your phone it's full on technologically advanced compared to the cars and the vans that I drove in the past. I really like it. I really think it's pretty cool. But bing, that low fuel light comes on. We just passed the Oasis. We don't know when the next one is coming up. And it starts counting down like 18 miles to empty, 17 miles to empty, 16 miles to empty. And then we finally, we, I see a sign coming up that says next Oasis. And the Ohio, Indiana, Ohio border is coming up. And I go, don't worry, Karen. There is always a gas station right across the border. They always have the welcome uh, area. They always have like, what's it called? The, um, fuck. There's always, there's like, like oh, the welcome station. You know, you pull in, there's like a rest area. There's, a, there's different things. There's like a truck stop there. And when you're on the turnpike going through Indiana, Ohio, they've got, you know, they've, they've got the, the welcome oasis. Right. So I knew it. there's there's going to be a gas station coming up within 17 miles. We pass over the Ohio border. We pay the fucking toll. We keep on going. The signs coming up says next Oasis. I can't quite read it. It says 16 miles until we're empty. We get past the sign. It says 19 miles till the next Oasis. So Karen immediately goes into full panic mode. She held it together actually pretty well. You know, I'd seen her actually in full panic mode where she was practically paralyzed <laughs> with anxiety. And sometimes I've been there too, man, but I've had some crazy breakdowns in the past. I've ran out of gas before. I've been stuck on the side of the highway with a flat tire trying to change that shit with cars going by at 70, 80 miles per hour. So I know what it's like. I've been there, done that. You know, this ain't nothing I ain't seen before. And she's just freaking out. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? So we pull over this exit and it looked like there was a subway there, maybe part of a truck stop, big billboards, you know, coming up. It's got whatever sit go or marathon, whatever the gas station was. And then it says coming soon, soon to be built. I'm like, oh, fuck. Now, at this point, we've got like five miles left before the gas is completely gone on the car. So I go. I'm on Google Maps trying to figure it out. It says, Google Maps cannot be reached at this time. So just on pure faith, you know, using, using the force that I've learned from the Jedi Master himself, Yoda, I just had the feeling. I had the intuition. I had the gut instinct that if we just keep going down that road, 
there will be a gas station before we run out. And Karen's like, I don't know, I don't know. And we're going over these hills and around corners. We're out there in the middle of the cornfield. There is fucking nothing, nothing. But I can see a water tower up in the distance. And I was like, well, there's a town. If there's a water tower, there's got to be a town. And if there's a town, there's got to be a gas station. So they're like, I don't know. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And so we just keep going down. And sure enough, we come up on the town. I think it's Eden, Eden, Ohio. You can look it up if you really want. Um, Eden, Ohio. One water tower and one gas station. That was it that's that was the entire town was comprised of one water tower and one gas station if they decided to put up a business but they decided to do a bar or a restaurant or anything else other than a gas station i might be doing this live report right now from some rednecks basement in the middle of a cornfield in ohio may possibly kidnapped tied up begging for help begging for a rescue you know but no hell no we made it man the the jer dog jedi mind trick paid off i knew that we were going to be okay karen in the meantime she's like i never want to experience anything like that again oh my god her heart was thumping she was sweating like crazy even after we were driving away with a full tank of gas she was telling me all about her anxiety and the panic attack that she was experiencing and it was still she still had the uh, she still had her heart thumping away. Her heart was still racing. But I've been there and done that many times, man. When you travel around the country doing all these shows all over the place, you're gonna be you wind up in all kinds of mix-ups. You're gonna wind up in all kinds of scrapes. You know, the the the, the last car I had, the Mangina, the van, the Vangina, the uh, minivan, the Jerry Dog One Man Tour Bus. That fucker blew up in February. And it was, and it was, uh, and it was gonna blow up while I was going over the Mississippi River Bridge, you know. Everything was cool. Driving to my gig in Wisconsin, pull over in Dubuque, Iowa, have my lunch at Chipotle. Everything is fine. It's I'm, in fact, I'm early. Like for once in my life, I left early. I'm gonna arrive at the gig early. I'm not stressing out at all. I eat my lunch. I get back in the vagina. I'm heading down the highway. The next thing I know, like literally within seconds, the the temperature gauge just goes all the way up into the red. I'd been there before. I knew exactly what that meant. The radiator was about to go. It happened like six months prior. The 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 it just was overheating. You know, and you could smell the air, you could smell the exhaust, you could smell the oil burning, you could smell whatever it was, the chemicals burning smell coming through the vents of the van. I've been there, done that. The last time it happened, the whole fucking thing just locked up. I could barely like steer it over to the side of the road to call a tow truck, come take me to some place where it can get repaired. I had to find Uber for my wife and kids, take them home 30 miles away, right? The last thing I wanted to do was be stuck in Dubuque, Iowa, of all fucking places, with a broke down van. But I'd been there, done that. I pull over immediately. I tried to use some of the advice that Bob Lafada, who came on here. See, he also, he's not only is my tax advisor, but the dude was also a mechanic. The last time my van was overheating, I didn't know what the hell to do. I would drive for just a little while. Um, I was putting on, you know, the, the vents on full. So it was constantly bringing in cool air to keep the, you know, drive, trying to drive at 70 miles an hour to keep the engine cool. I finally make it in to Lake Station, Indiana. I tell my friend Bob, hey, I'm coming over, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it the rest of the way to Iowa. The van's about to over. He's like, no, no, here's what you got to do. And he, he showed me about putting water in there and, and all that stuff. I don't know shit, really. I don't really know shit about cars. I know how to change the oil. I know how to change the tire. That's about it. So, Bob, you got me up on my way, ready to go. It was not your fault, Bob. It was not your fault. You saved me, dude. You're right. It was not your fault. You saved my ass. You know, that's what I love about traveling this country. I've got friends everywhere. And whenever I get into a scrape, there's always one of you out there that's willing to help me out. So I had that in the back of my mind as well. While Karen and I, you know, were driving down the road, almost ready to run out of gas. And she's freaking out. But I go, you know, one way or another, we'll get out of this mix up. 
we'll get out of this jam. I've been there, done that many, many, many times. I've had the car break down where we had a flat tire. It was too goddamn, like normally I can take care of that. But this was like 30 to below degree weather. The lug nuts were frozen onto the fucking tire. I called AAA. They came out. They couldn't even get the tire off. I was stuck there. It was one of the only gigs. I think I've missed like a total of three gigs in the last 20 years for one reason or another. It's always weather related or car related. You know, either some blizzard comes up and they literally shut down the interstate and I can't go. Uh, I missed one gig one time because it's had a crazy flu. No, not brown bottle flu. Even if I got brown bottle flu, I'll still make it to the gig. Just like Nathan did this last weekend at Tiffin Eagles Club. Or the car breaks down. I can't get the lug nuts changed. I had to call the club. There's no way I can make it. You can send somebody up the highway. I'm only about 50 miles away. Send somebody up. Come pick me up. They're like, no, we can't do that. So I was like, no, shit, can't make the gig. It's like three out of three, three gigs out of 20 years, 2,000, 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 gigs that I've done in 20 years. I missed three of them. I, those are pretty good goddamn odds. So I just had the faith that we would make it. I had the faith that we would not run out of gas. You know, and I've had much scarier moments, like when the radiator's about to lock up in Dubuque, Iowa, and I go to pull over off the exit to hit up a gas station where I can take care of things and maybe try to do something to at least make it to the rest of the gig. But the exit that I took was not pulling over to the gas station. The exit that I took was getting right onto the fucking Mississippi River Bridge, which is like a mile long, where there's nowhere to pull over. And if you and if the thing was locked up then, hell, I don't know what the hell I would have done. I might have steered right over the side into the fucking river, and that would have been the end of my days. I've been there, man. It's been I've had some scary moments in the past. There was one other time when the gas light came on, and I was like, okay, I need to hit the next exit. And I'm going through Chicago traffic on I-90 or 94, whatever it is. And if you've ever drove through Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. It can be bumper to bumper. It's pretty goddamn tight. And I pull over to the get to the exit. I go, okay, I see exit coming up, gas coming up one mile away. I'm good to go. I pull over to the exit and it says exit closed. So I start driving down further. Maybe, okay, maybe I'll take the next exit, swing back around. Maybe that one will have a gas station. If not, like, am I going to be able to make it the six miles back to this one? I don't know what the hell's going on. And this was before they had the little indicator light, the little indicator number that counts down how many miles you have left to go until you're completely empty. I was in full-on panic mode. I was losing my mind. And as I'm driving down towards the next exit, I got into a little construction zone where they've got all those barricade walls. What are those called? The retainer walls. They've got the concrete retainer walls on both sides of the lane. There is literally, it's one lane on I-90, 94, coming out of Chicago. Literally nowhere to pull over, bumper to bumper traffic. If I ran out of gas then, it would have caused major fucking problems, backing up traffic for miles around. And... And how the hell would I have even have gotten AAA to come fix me up and help me out? You know, there's one lane of traffic. There's not even a shoulder where they could drive by. I just would have been stuck. I would have been fucked. And so would have everybody else that was in line behind me that was in traffic on I-90. That's what you call panic, my friend. But whatever happened, man, I got lucky. Made it down to the next exit. Coasted right into that gas station. Filled that motherfucker up and vowed I would never make that mistake again until it happened this last Saturday on my way to the Eagles Club in Tiffin, Ohio with my wife, Karen, in tow. All right, man. Hey, thank you guys for being here. Let's go into some comments. Tim says, K-Rail. Um, are you talking about K-Rail? I don't know what that means exactly. Tim's always gone here with comments that confuse me, though. <laughs> hey, buddy. Uh, thanks for checking in, though. Shout out to everybody there in Azusa. Tell Maureen I said hi. Mason Hansen, Chicago is the worst when it comes to that shit. Yeah, you're damn right, dude. That's why I moved out of there. I really like Chicago a lot. I like living in the city. I just hated traveling in and out of the city. I like the hustle and bustle. I like going down this, you know, just when I would go down to the post office or I'd go down to the store. You know, there's so much crazy shit happening. And you'd have a story every place you went to, something exciting was going on. I liked living there for the most part, but I did not like that traffic. So I moved back here to Iowa where things are a little bit more laid back. Oh, yeah, concrete barrier, K-Rail. That's what I thought you meant. That's what I thought you meant, buddy. Missy Carson says, I've been there. 
Gil Bolton with a laugh. Thank you for being here. The Welcome Center. Yeah. See, sometimes my mind just wanders. I don't. I. I just. Uh, I blurt this out spontaneously. I tell these stories completely off the top of my head, according to memory, and sometimes I get myself in a verbal mix-up. Jennifer, you could get all your people together, and we could have a Jared Dog Fest. That is not a bad idea. I don't know if I like the name jared dog fest i want to come up with something a little bit cooler a little bit more fun a little bit more exciting hopefully get more people there but that would be one hell of a party we got to do it hey troy jo thanks for joining in i'm about to wrap up but you need to give me a call dude let's make that idea of yours happen uh like i said a lot coming up here in 2018 a lot of exciting stuff happening i'm very excited for 2019 the calendar is filling up fast i'm booked on saturdays pretty much until march and beyond and it's just going to keep growing from there that's because of you that's because of my loyal fans friends and followers that hang out with me every day on the 420 report live video I do every day at 420 p.m. That's because of you who come out and see me do my shows live, the Jaredog Comedy Road Shows at nightclubs, taverns, and neighborhood bars all over this great country. It's because of you that I have friends all over the place, that even if I have a car breakdown, I'm stuck in the middle of a bean field in fucking Ohio, I know in the bottom of my heart that everything will be just fine. Keep the faith, my friends. Keep the faith and know that I've got your back the same as you've got mine. So I really appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for watching. Hit me up with some more questions and comments. Even if you're watching on the replay or even if I'm about to wrap it up and I don't get to it, I try to get to all of them. At least give you the thumbs up to let you know that I saw it and I appreciate it. And I will see you again soon at a live show. Like I said, Iowa fans, friends, and followers, this Friday night in Charles City at Hot Shots Billiards will be your last chance of the year to see your good pal Jaredog here in Iowa. Charles City, Hot Shots Billiards. I'll have Nathan Tricky Allen in tow. Hopefully he will not be carrying West Nile virus or bronchitis or whatever the fuck it was he had. But hopefully he will still be loaded up on cough syrup because that shit made him hilarious. Missy Carson, damn near in Alabama late at night where you can roll down the window and hear actual banjos playing. <laughs> that's true. And that, that that's just in the air. You know, it's not like there's even anybody playing the banjos. It, this is, that's just in the air. You know, that's, that's just like the natural sound of the state. Where else am I going to be? Fulton, Illinois, next Saturday night, September 29th. I'm going to be going on the road with my good friends Andy Hartley and Jeremy Cartwright to Milford, Kansas next Friday night. Uh, then Washington State after that. Mason Hansen checked in a little bit earlier. I can't wait to meet you, dude. Shout out to Blaine and all the people up there at the Kenwick Eagles Club. And then I head on over to Everett, Washington, just north of Seattle. A lot of shows coming up nationwide. Be, be there. Be there for one of them. And I got more shows coming up in Iowa in 2019. But like I said, this Friday night's your last chance. So thank you guys for being here once again on the 420 Report. I've already yacked a little bit too long, longer than I was expecting to. Hey, Matt, what's up, buddy? Coming to Wisconsin soon. Stay tuned for dates. And uh, if you want to copy my CD for free, barcomic.com. Otherwise, that's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow at 420 p.m. or as close as possible. Until then, dog bless America.